Welcome to the lyric analysis of Thus Saith the Lord EP. I don't know. I, it's been such a long time. I forget how to start these off. But um, yeah, we released the EP. We're really happy about it. And the reception has been great. Uh, we totally don't deserve this many followers. For some reason, we have this many. It's almost as much as my normal uh, profiles now. Um, but yeah, as you can see, Reformed Thus Saith the Lord EP now out. So you can listen to our five track, which is Smoke of the Torment, Reprobate, Martyr, Conqueror, and Thus Saith the Lord. Um, I'll give a little bit of recap before we get started on the study, but pretty much, yeah, um, we released it on the 24th. Um, the entirety of the album is essentially just a, a gospel presentation in four parts, and then the fifth one kind of ties it all together musically and lyrically. Um, what we're really happy about is that we got some accolades. So Kingdom Core, um ranked us as album of the year number eight, which is a Christian metal album. It's the highest ranking EP, which is cool. Um, And honestly, we're really honored for that. It's behind some pretty awesome bands. And also For The Rock ranked us as a number four album of the year. And it's also the top EP, which is pretty insane because we're above bands who are definitely (laughs) way more experienced than us. But for a group of guys who didn't know what we were doing, and we kind of just figured it out. Uh, it's pretty awesome. But I'll, I'll talk about the details. Let's just start off with prayer to open up. Father God, thank you for allowing us this platform to explore your word and to learn more about what you have in store for us in your teachings. I pray, Lord, that you bring to remembrance all the different aspects of the lyrics of our songs that I may exposit the text and and, and piece together a message of the gospel that will be edifying to all listening. And I thank you, Lord, that you worked in all of us and 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 brought about this EP. Uh, I thank you for all the ears that um, our lyrics will fall upon. And may you do your work through the gospel, which is your power unto salvation. I pray that we'll, We'll grow together, edify each other, and be motivated to study your word more deeply as we explore all these topics. In Jesus' name, amen. So yeah, um, I guess the lyrical overview for the album, uh, Smoke of Their Torment, starting off with pretty much an exposition of the state of man and the reality of the judgment of God because of the wrath of his that is kindled toward us as sinners. Um, I'm going to very briefly like to just read the lyrics as we go so that when we get to the state of the Lord, we can see how I reference everything. Um, but essentially I, I talk about this way more in depth in my, in the other studies, but um, we open up broadly talking about God judging the world. It pinpoints down all the way to you having to face the question Am I righteous? Is there anyone righteous? Do I seek after God? Is anyone good at all? And the answer is no. Um, And then it comes back to the main theme of the song, which is that the smoke of their torment, those who will be receiving the wrath of God, that will endure forever. And it's not where you want to be. So it's a big shock, a big slap in the face. And it's a wake-up call. And I believe... I quoted Charles Spurgeon who said that the law and gospel is the strongest tool or the ablest auxiliary of the Christian evangelist, which is to say that there's, there's Proverbs that say, or no, it's a Psalm. I forget which one that says that the law of God revives the soul. And the reason is it, that is that it's a mirror that we hold up to our face and we see the sin and we see the need for a savior. And God works through that knowledge in order to bring us to regeneration and repentance. But that's part one. There's no like silver lining to the song. It just ends like this. So you're like, okay, now what? Um, The next song shows what you don't want to do, which is to be reprobated. (laughs) And essentially that's if, if you reject the call. So you listen to the call of Smoke the Torment and you say, no, I don't want you, God. I don't need you. I don't need your forgiveness. I don't need your anything. So reprobate is shooing the path 
um, that leads to destruction and what the result is. Um, very, very convicting song. Even for myself, as I heard like my recording back, it really made me think about like, well, I mean, all of us have things to improve on um, in terms of like our sanctification process and, and avoiding sin and, and repenting and, and leaning on the Lord for strength to follow the spirit rather than the flesh. Um, but it's a wake up call. Like those who believe themselves to be Christian, but are faltering in many ways, this may be the call for them to realize, hmm, I'm not actually taking this seriously. Um, and reprobation is a very, uh, like deep and shocking concept. So we'll, we'll, we'll I, I go over it in the study, but also we'll read it again. But that's pretty much part two is what happens if you turn from God. Um, the answer is if you're reprobated, he turns from you essentially, which is kind of a no bueno. So then the other side is, okay, well, what happens if I do turn to God? What's in it for me? Do I have an amazing life set ahead of me? Or let's look, oh, you know what? What we should do instead of think contemplating, will my life be good? Let's look at what the first Christians went through. Oh no, this is terrible. <laughs> yeah. So the first Christians were martyred, which means that they held on to the faith um, to their deaths gruesomely. Um, and this song essentially is an exposition of the hope that is in Christ because it permits you and um, empowers you to remain in the faith and remain in the promises of um, God so that even through persecution, even when you feel you're forsaken, even though you're groaning, you have the promise of the kingdom of God and a reward in heaven, even though you're, you're persecuted in all these ways. So, um, it's a very powerful message, and we have to tip our hats to the martyrs of the Christian faith because I, I quoted to Tertullian on this one who where he said that the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church, which is to say that the church propagated and was strengthened because of the strength of the martyrs where they went into hostile lands in order to preach the gospel. <clears throat> and the gospel message really is it's based in a sacrificial atonement, and so the life of a Christian is a sacrificial one. And while us sitting in our comfy little houses don't have very much persecution, it's very possible that a period of tribulation can come up and something really bad can occur. Um, but next is the way to kind of wrap everything up. Uh, the Conqueror has taken lyrics from uh, the Trinity Psalter hymnal uh, number 373 called See the Conqueror. It's literally just copy-pasted lyrics, um, but the lyrics are based on Psalm 24 and a couple others. But essentially, this speaks of the ascension of Christ, the victory of Christ over death, and the victory that we partake in in Christ. So it's not just that Jesus paid our fine, but that we receive Christ and we become uh, one body with him. So um, as the body of Christ together, we endure the suffering and come out on the other side glorious and um, having conquered sin and death. And that's the promise that we have in Christ. And it's, it's beautiful. Um, we have the victory in Christ, and that's the victory over sin, death, and Satan. So then we get to Dust Day of the Lord. Uh, essentially summarizes all these things, but there's a little bit more information. And we'll get to this, but essentially the reason why the title is Thus Saith the Lord is because what we are preaching in our songs is not our own imagination. It's not our private interpretation or anything. It's literally just scripture. Scripture teaches what we're saying and we're saying what scripture teaches. Um, and it's very important to understand this and to yield to the fact that the God of the universe has spoken to us through Christ um, and given us this understanding because it is this that permits life, the understanding of the gospel itself. Um, outside of that, there is only destruction, not just in this life, but eternally, which is what truly matters. So we'll get to this. I just want to quickly read over the lyrics for the other songs. I'm not going to go into all the different references, but because I do that in the other songs, but you can see them up here. So smoke of the torment. The judgment of the Lord is coming quickly. Men shall cry bitterly. A day of wrath and trouble and wasteness, desolation laid. A trump, the trump and alarm against the fenced cities and every tower high. 
for he will bring distress because they have sinned against the Most High God. Blood shall be poured out as dust. Uh, I'm zooming in a little bit. Blood shall be poured out as dust, for neither silver nor gold shall spare them in that day. Repent. The land shall be devoured. By fire there shall be a sudden end of them all. Let his eyes see his own destruction, and all the wicked of earth let him see for himself the wrath. So then you see the imagery here just being built up of God's wrath and, and the destruction that ensues on the people who reject him. Um, here's the chorus. And the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God poured out in all indignation. Now behold the torment, fire and brimstone in the presence of the lamb. That is to say that Jesus is not some cuddly hippie. He's present in the administration of the wrath of God on worthy sinners. Worthy in the sense that they're worthy of <laughs> this wrath. Next uh, verse. For we, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what's due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. And I think this is the one line in the song that's taken literally word for word, which is cool that it, just, it worked. <laughs> uh, again, let his eyes see his own destruction and all the wicked men see for themselves the wrath of the most high God. Of course, again, and then Romans 3, is there any righteous and you understand or seek after God or is there any good at all? No, not one. Nobody. Um, then the perspective of someone who's burning. It burns. They lie to me. You can insert they as whoever you imagine it to be, any false teacher. I thought I was good. No, not one. Then finally, finishing off, let his eyes see his own destruction and all the wicked of earth. Let him see for himself the wrath. And the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God poured out in all indignation. Now behold the torment, fire and brimstone in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment now ascendeth up forever, forever and ever. For they'll have no rest, not day nor night, in the presence of the Lamb of God. So yeah, pretty intense lyrics. Um, but what is being said here is true. The Lord hath spoken and said all these things. And we can trust that it's true. And that these things will come to pass for all those outside of Christ. So then we get to reprobate. I'll zoom in again. Um, this first verse actually was written. It's funny. It was written by... Uh, Jake before reformed even formed. Um, and it's just fits so well with what I had imagined for the rest of the song. Um, also on that note, I, I, I kind of planned on introduce, not introducing, but since this is like the EP commemoratory video, uh, it made sense for me to just give a blurb about what reformed mission statement is. And I should have done that at the beginning, but better late than never. So pretty much reformed metal band, heavy and unapologetic Christian metal. Our mission is to preach the gospel and our music, but undergirding that is the desire to create Christian metal music that is theologically deep because personally, I do not feel, I guess, spiritually, intellectually nourished by what I see around me in terms of popular preachers and sermons and popular music. Even Christian metal, which I find to be very much attempting to be subtle to blend in with um, secular bands, we should have more boldness in the Christian community and the, the Christian metal scene. And I hope to show with Reformed that it's quite simple to do. We can just take verses from the Bible and create a narrative that's already out there for us. Um, it's not like some prideful thing like, oh, look at me. I'm so good at writing these theologically deep lyrics. I mean, you look, it's literally just Bible verses and that's enough because the word of God is powerful in itself. You don't have to add much to it to uh, do anything. I mean, you don't have to need to add anything to it. Um, so it's a call to action to other band, metal bands to be more bold with their lyrics. It's also a call to all those listening that, the free gift of salvation is available to all those who believe. So um, that's the call. And the name Reformed is referring to reforming ourselves always to Scripture. Um, and this means reforming back to the apostolic faith, which involves expository preaching and adherence to what the Bible teaches and not going astray from it. So we should always be reforming ourselves, reforming our ways, and reforming our methods of evangelism. So that's the name and that's our mission. So reprobate. Uh, I'll start reading here. So weak-minded and self-consumed, everything is up for grabs, including you. 
You see the world crumble at your feet, but point the blame like a coward sheep. Um, the idea being, oh, Proverbs 13, 19, 3 is a really good verse. Um, I'll just read it word for word because I think it's much more effective than me just uh, summarizing it. So, the foolish foolishness of man perverted, per, per, ugh, perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. So in other words, um, I mean, the NIV is a good translation, I think, in for this specific verse. A person's own folly leads to their ruin, yet their heart rages against the Lord. So many conversations I've had with people who place the blame on God for the sin around them. And it's like, well, you're the one committing the sin, but you're pointing the blame at God. Very foolish. And that Romans 1 goes all, goes all into depth about this, but the fact that we've changed the image of the corruptible God for incorruptible man and... It just goes downhill from there. Bow to your created kings. Your false idols can't hear you speak. Will you stand firm or backslide just like the rest? Again, there's two paths, narrow and broad. What did Christ die for, for you to keep living in sin? All of these vile passions will strike you dead. For all have sinned and you will have no inheritance. Eternal damnation is on your path, so repent. Very, very potent um, chorus all the chock full of scripture. Uh, I take no credit, right? Um, but this, this, this makes you think, why would Christ die for you to keep living in sin? He didn't die for that. So while you're pursuing these vile passions, which you'll see that I change it to affections in the state of the Lord because I think that's a more accurate um, pinpointing of what Romans 1 is talking about in terms of like lust and affection. That will strike you dead. Um, again, affirming all have sinned. And... For the break, this is a direct quote from Matthew 7, 18 to 19, talking about good fruits. And that's, that and, and just keep in mind, that's not just good works versus bad works, but it's talking about doctrine. A good fruit will not bear corrupt doctrine. Because the, the, the verse right before this is talking about false teachers. So that's, that's the context here. Um, it's works and doctrine. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. And then this is my favorite... Uh, part of the song you've created god in your own image to sin guilt free to be a hyphen there in your reprobate mind professing to be wise you became fools you changed the truth of god into a lie oof i'm gonna tell the truth with no more softening i'm not holding back anymore you can't silence my words all other paths will lead to hell listen to me heed my words to save your soul and then the affirmation here christ is king and all have sinned your life depends on your repentance. And sin and repentance rhymes if you say it in a certain way. <laughs> you may die tomorrow and face the holy throne. And then again with the chorus, the outro, if you're at God's feet, how will you justify your sin? Jesus' righteousness is freely given. Will you accept the gift or are you reprobate? Again, you have two choices. The hand of God is offered. Will you take that gift or will you reveal yourself to be reprobated? Are you so blinded by your sin that you cannot see your peril and you want nothing to do with God. And the other hope is that these lyrics revive the soul and someone comes to faith through these. Right? So then Martyr. The very uplifting song Martyr. Well, it is uplifting and also heart-wrenching at the same time. Right? So Psalm 22, this is a messianic psalm. Jesus quoted this first line on the uh, cross. So it's about him, but it's also about the suffering servant, which is all those Christians essentially who are martyred, right? My God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from all my groaning? I cry out by day and night, yet you are holy. My strength is dried up and my tongue is clung to my jaws. And you are fathers trusted. They trusted and you rescued them. Yet not I. I am a worm, not man. A disgrace to mankind, despised by the people. All who see me deride me and sneer. So this entire part here is Psalm 22. So I use the entire psalm for like the first part of the song. Uh, it's just that relevant, right? And yet you said to me, so despite all this, you said to me, and this is a direct quote from Jesus, obviously paraphrase slightly, blessed is he persecuted here for me, for theirs is the kingdom of God and great is your reward in heaven. Amen. That's the hope that we cling to. And the whole point of, I mean, the whole strength behind the martyr is the Holy Spirit carrying them through it. The perseverance of the saints is the holding on to this hope, right? And we see this in verse two. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, 
persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed. I'm pretty certain this is almost word for word. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Show them the light of Christ just as you, just as you did for me. So in, in, behind the martyr who's suffering is a compassion and a love for those who are torturing them because we desire the same fate for all people that they will, um, not that they will suffer like us, but that they will um, rejoice with us in the victory that we talk about and conquer. So then here, uh, for the sake of Christ, then I am content, even with this weakness and persecution, for when I am weak, then I am strong through you. So again, affirming it's the Holy Spirit carrying us through. Um, and I think about this as well, like <laughs> a little bit of a, t- t- not tangent, but um, if I ever were had to go to this, go through this sort of persecution in myself right now, I don't know how I would possibly endure all the pain in the torture. Like my pain tolerance is not that good. But in the moment when it's actually happening, those who endure will see eternal life. And I believe that the Holy Spirit allows you and strengthens you to endure. So I'd be resting entirely in the, in the spirit in order to carry me through. Right. And that's what, that's how all these martyrs were able to do it. They went joyfully to these situations. Verse three, for we who live are always being given over to death for Christ's sake. And the word always, I, I took like okay, KJV and other ones do this, but always more like continually. So we who live are continually being given over to death for Christ's sake so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. So again, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church, which is that in our death, the life of Jesus is shown so that life can be at work in anyone else. For now, I will be a martyr for Christ, a disgrace to mankind, despised by the people. However, but you love me and will see me through because you said to me. So hated by the world, hated by the people, loved by Christ. And that's why we're able to go through. And the promise is, blessed is he persecuted here for me, for theirs is the kingdom of God and great is your reward in heaven. And then, you can flip the other way around now from our perspective. So, therefore, blessed am I inheriting eternal life through our death, declaring that the kingdom has come and from this wretched corpse set free. So, the, same, the sinful body we're in, the sinful world we're in, we're set free from it. The kingdom has come and we can declare this boldly because it's true. And then I repeat, because you die for me, I'll die for you. Kind of like a ending scene with Lord Jesus received my spirit, which is a quote from Stephen as he was being stoned. He looked into heaven and saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the father, welcoming him and not necessarily congratulating him, but um, giving him his respect as the first Christian martyr, right? Because you die for me, I'll die for you. And in dying for you and having in him dying for us, what does that mean? And the conqueror uh, speaks to this perfectly. <clears throat> See the conqueror mounts in triumph, see the king in royal state, riding on the clouds his chariot to his heavenly palace gate. Hear the choir of angel voices, joyful alleluia sing, and the gates on high are open to receive their heavenly king. Who on the cross did suffer, he who from the grave arose, Jesus, con- Jesus conquered sin, by death has beat his foes. So we see here, it's just like the imagery that's built, the angels welcoming Jesus into heaven the first time a man steps foot into through the gates who is this that comes in glory is the next line but the idea is the heavenly king is being welcomed and received for all his people who he died for who is this that comes in glory trumpets sound with jubilee lord of battles god of armies he has gained the victory I'm just completing this, this, the <laughs> the hymn but for the melody of the song and that's what <laughs> it's just these lines that, that were needed who on the cross did suffer, he who from the grave arose, Jesus conquered sin and Satan, by his death has beat his foes. I'm just, I just, I'll continue the rhyme just because it makes sense. <laughs> um, Jesus reigns, adorned by, adored by angels, man with God is on the throne. You have raised our human nature on the clouds to God's right hand. There will sit in heavenly places, there with you in glory stand. Jesus reigns, adored by angels, man with God is on the throne. Mighty Lord, in your ascension, we by faith behold our own. So the idea is 
we partake of the divine nature. That's a verse from, I forget which of Peter's epistles, um, that because Christ ascended, we're ascended with him, that we are, we are brought to heaven and see that the heavenly places, that in Christ's ascension, we behold our own by faith, through faith. And then the chorus is the same. The bridge is slightly changing up a little bit. So uh, God of armies, he has gained the victory. Taking on God's wrath, he's gained the victory. Dying in our place, he's gained the victory. Um, so these words aren't actually in, this, in, this, in the hymn itself. I added them just to come. I, I find that it didn't talk about death in our place and taking on God's wrath. So I added that in um, a little bit of artistic liberty there. He who on the cross did suffer, he who from the grave arose, Jesus conquered sin and Satan, by his death our sins atoned. And amen to the tenth degree. This uh I love this uh hymn. And the funny story is that someone sent it to me and I have no idea who, and I kept trying to find who. Uh, I have no idea who sent this to me. I would never would have found this hymn otherwise, and it was just perfect to close off the album before the final medley. So we're finally at <laughs> Thus Saith the Lord after what, 30 minutes of going through everything else? Um, maybe not 30, but something like that. So yeah, thus saith the Lord, summarizing everything and uh, just wrapping up the entirety of the gospel message and emphasizing that what it is is scripture and scripture alone. Um, and there's no denying what the scripture says and we are the messengers of what the scriptures say uh, in the lyric video or the lyric visualizer, you'll see that I, I added this quote or not quote, but this, this passage or set of verses, I guess it's just a verse, but it's two numbers, even though it's one sentence. But anyways, um, and I think it really encapsulates the thesis of at least part one of the song. But as you see with, with the say of the Lord, it's original lyrics as in, it's not, referencing any of the four songs then we have smoke of their torment we go into martyr then we go into reprobate then we go into the conqueror and then it goes back to original does say the lord lyrics and then it finishes off with smoke of their torment so it's almost the same order as the song releases however martyr comes first and reprobate sec uh, third so it's like a a little bit of flip of an order because we're talking about how like reprobate is the bad path and martyr is the good path flipped around but it's just because the instrumental was already done and it just worked uh and just a, a a fun fact this song was not intended to be a medley of any sort it was just a long song that tony wrote and it was actually written first before any of the other songs uh and then upon trying to figure out how to release the ep by the end of the year we were like oh well thus saith the lord some parts sound a little too much like Smoke of Their Torment. What do we do? And it's kind of long. Kind of had the idea, oh, well, let's make it the outro song of the EP. And I had the idea just to reference all the other songs. So in one part, it was <laughs> me not wanting to come up with new melodies, but also it just works. And it's some like art artistic thing to like <laughs> reference old songs, even though it's not like, it seems super intelligent and like, wow, so thoughtful. But like, no, it's just, you just sing the old melodies and then call it a day <laughs> uh, but it wraps together really well and um let's let's just, let's just go through so second peter 1 uh verse 20 21 but know this first of all that no prophecy of scripture becomes a matter of someone's own interpretation for no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will but men moved by the holy spirit spoke from god uh, another translation that will say is not a, um the no prophecy of scripture is a matter of private interpretation um, and these prophecies do not come from man. It comes from God and specifically Holy Spirit speaking through men. Um, so yeah, when it comes to understanding scripture or understanding what we're supposed to listen to, the things that man says is not necessarily the truth. It's the truth. If it's what God has said first. Um, so the first verse of the song is referencing Hebrews one which is a Hebrews is an intense book, but chapters one and two are, are really cool. Um, I'll just read it. God who at many times in, and in manners diverse spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. He has in these last days spoken to us through his son. 
That is to say, the methods by which God re made revelation for us in the past was that he used multiple prophets of old. So that's how he spoke um, to the people to deliver the message of um, the future salvation and the truth of the law and sin and, and uh, repentance and turning to him and reforming your ways. That was done through um, people of old, uh, the prophets who spoke to the fathers. But in these last days, which is now, he's spoken to us through his son. Jesus Christ came to earth and delivered the conclusion of the message and his appointed apostles wrote the epistles that concluded the message and concluded the canon. So what we have now, our completed Bible, our completed canon, is the f final installment of God's revelation to us. So let us rest in what the word says. Let's not add and let's not remove. This is the truth. So now the question is, what does the scripture say? Um, so this I is well, it's almost word for word for what John said, but since I'm singing it instead of writing it, I kind of changed these things we've written I've written to you to these things I've sung to you just as it is written. So like same sort of thing, I'm just singing it rather than having it written, but it's as written. So that you may believe on the name of Jesus Christ, that you may know you have eternal life. So what's the purpose of God speaking through the fathers uh, to the fathers to the prophets and speaking to us through his son in the last days? It is so that we may believe on the name of Jesus Christ and that we may know we have eternal life. And this gets to a different topic in terms of assurance of salvation, but we know it's not a possibility like, oh, I don't know if I'm saved or not. No, we, we know if we believe on Jesus. And okay, well, what happens if you do not believe on the name of Jesus? He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. This is John the Baptist speaking at the end of John uh, chapter 3. So, we have two paths lined out here. Eternal life for those who believe on the name of Christ. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So, that's introducing the topic, Smoke of the Torment. Um, but the way it starts out is this, Am I casting pearls to the swine? It's a reference to Matthew 7, 6, where Jesus says, Do not cast your pearls to the swine. Essentially, if we're preaching and preaching and preaching and preaching the gospel, we're preaching the fact that all have sinned, you know, repent of your sins, trust in Christ for the salvation of your soul. Um, this is the way to eternal life. Um, neglecting this way and rejecting it is the path to damnation. We say this over and over and over, but if it falls on deaf ears, are we casting pearls, which is the gospel, to swines who will not appreciate, not eat, lap it up, um, and to further emphasize what that means, will you still reject Christ's gift to your own destruction? It's something you have to ask yourself. Do you value the gospel? Do you think it's something beautiful? Is it a beautiful narrative and a beautiful story arc like as an atheist if you're listening yeah it's a beautiful story are you going to reject it am i just casting these pearls to the swine are you one of these swines that are just rejecting christ's gift to your own destruction is there any merit in the historicity of christ and everything that's being said here all the prophecies fulfilled is this something that's true if it is well you know exactly what to do because as the chorus is it's a, it's a reference to smoke of their torment Melody is pretty much the same, but the instrumental goes to 5-4, which means that I how it was kind of forced to keep a rhythm of bum, 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 bum. Because, I mean, 5-4 is kind of messed up. 1-2-3, uh, 1-2-3, 1-2-1-2. Two, two, it's the only way to really break it up and have it make sense. So, Judgment Day is coming. I had to do it like that. Um, but, yeah, Smoke of the Torment. Here's the lyrics. Very brief and to the point, summarizing what Smoke of the Torment's about. Judgment Day is coming. Heed the warnings of our urgent preaching. No one's righteous. All have sinned. The wage of sin is death. That's the truth undergirding the gospel. Recognize this. You recognize you need a savior. Christ is that savior who died in your place already. Accept that gift and you'll be given eternal life. It's a very simple gospel. And uh, I forget, is it Hoser who, who said this? He said, the gospel is so beautiful and so simple that even the youngest child can understand it, but the wisest theologian will never um, be able to explore the deepest depths of it. So that is to say, you're a sinner, 
the wages in his death, but the gift of God's eternal life. Repent and accept Christ, uh, Christ's gift. Trust in him as your savior. You'll be saved. Simple message. A five-year-old can understand it. And a 99-year-old will never fully understand it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's beautiful. We'll spend the rest of our lives studying this and just diving deeper and deeper into the riches of it. Uh, I think that was more, that was the wording of it. The wisest theologian will never explore the deepest riches of it. Something along those lines. And then a reference back to, so let his eyes see his own destruction. So will you still reject Christ's gift? If so, well, let your eyes see your own destruction. We gave you the information. Now make the choice. And then this is a reference to martyr. So of course the chorus being blessed is he persecuted here for me. Um, kind of flip this around a little bit to reference Galatians 3.13, which is essentially this pretty much, it was a little paraphrase, but so cursed is he, he that hangeth on a tree. For Christ has redeemed us from the law by being made a curse for us on the cross. So cursed is he that hangeth on a tree is an Old Testament passage. Um, and this is actually fulfilled in Christ. So the tree, wood, the cross, you see the connection here. So Christ took the curse of the law because the law is a curse because it damns us because of its impossibility. Christ kept the law, redeemed us from it because he made him, he was made a curse on the cross for our sake. So he took on the shame, the curse, the wrath, everything, the torment, all on the cross in our place. And that's a beautiful truth. So then from there, we go into the verse for martyr. For thy sake we are killed, Lord. We're accounted as sheep to the slaughter. And as a reference, we might go back and read a little bit of Romans 8. Um, but is there, this is a, a grim passage in the middle of a beautiful, I know, let's, let's pull up Romans 8. I was just reading it yesterday because it was part of our uh, readings. Well, wow, that's a KJV. Just so we can understand the context of we're accounted as sheep to the slaughter. Um, here. So who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen to the amen to that. Like that's so beautiful. So we see a passage like this. We're accounted as sheep to the slaughter, but to what end? The end is that in Christ, not even death can separate us from his love. That will be with him forever, right? So then, this is from Revelation 14, 12. Here is the perseverance of the saints who keep your commandments. So here I'm referencing the whole part of the thesis of martyr that the perseverance of the saints is that the Holy Spirit carries us through the torture and the torment. And that while we may die, we live evermore in you. And this should be capitalized you. Ever warn you. It's a really beautiful message. And looking back, I'm just like seeing how it all comes together. I'm I'm just amazed at the beauty of God's word. Um yeah. So then, nice, nice, awesome message. Now let's look at reprobate lyrics. <laughs> so you know, here's the other side. You get all hyped up because wow, amazing. I, I'm so motivated. Now what's on the other side? Weak minded and self consumed. Uh, the penalty of your errors received by you. Um, and this is from Romans one where it's the, they received the due penalty of their error when it's talking about men, um, leaving the desire, the natural use of the women, the burn and their lust for one another, receiving the penalty of their error. That was meat. Um, it's true. Your conscience seared burning in your desires. This speaks to those whose consciences are seared with a, branding iron which is that they're so calloused and so blinded by their sin they don't even see their destruction and this can harken back to genesis 19 where we look at sodom and gomorrah where even after those who are trying to rape the two angels were blinded 
they still kept reaching and pacing for the door to open the house. You would think you're doing something so barbaric and you got punished for it immediately in blindness and you're still pursuing it. It's a perfect image of reprobation that you're so blinded by your sin that you continue in it and it's like there's no more brain left. It's like that, That's how serious that state is. And only by the grace of God can someone be rescued from something like that. Um, but in the end, yeah, so burning in your desires, again, referencing Romans one twenty seven. Uh, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. And this is coming from 1 Corinthians 6, 9, uh, which is, do you know not that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor abusers of themselves of mankind. Um, it, the list goes on and on. And I've covered it in previous studies. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll read it just because uh, it has a happy ending. 6, 9 to 11. Uh, okay. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. So you read that and you're like, man, I mean, I check off a few boxes here, right? And what am I supposed to do? I will not inherit the kingdom of God. But such were some of you but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. But what happens? You were these things, but in the name of the Lord Jesus, we were justified. And by the spirit of our God, we are washed and sanctified. Sanctified. The Holy Spirit washes you from this previous state of unrighteousness and having forfeited any inheritance in the kingdom of God. And that's the beauty of the gospel. Not anything that we've done, but all the work of the Holy Spirit washing and sanctifying us and justifying us. And that's beautiful. But returning back to the lyrics, it's not all of sunshine and rainbows because we still have to say, what did Christ die for? For you to keep living in sin. All these vile affections will strike you dead. So it's the, it's the reprobate chorus, but looking back, I should have said affections. So I do it here. A little bit of redemption for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's just because the, the, the language in Romans 1 is talking about, uh, it says the, it talks about affections and lusts. It's not just passions. And many translations say affections and, oh, sorry, they say passions and I don't really like that word. <clears throat> okay, so next is the conqueror. So what I use for here, actually, um, when I, so if you look up the Trinity Psalter hymnal, um, number 373 what pops up is like on the uh trinity psalter hymnal website uh, hymnary is what that's what i used so um why oh, wasn't it showing up one of these this oh i guess i'll just say see the conqueror yeah see the conqueror psalter here you go it gives you three verses three stanzas right there's actually 10 so if you look at the fourth stanza, it's what I used for this here. So glory be to our God, the Father. Glory be to God, the Son. Dying, risen, ascending for us, who the heavenly realm is one. Glory be to the Holy Ghost, one God in persons three. Glory both in earth and heaven. Glory endless, glory be. Very beautiful, affirming the Trinity and summarizing the gospel and the Catholic faith, which is that we believe in a triune God. Amazing. Jesus reigns, adored by angels. Christ our Savior is risen. Those are borrowed lyrics from the other stanzas. And then for the chorus, so I mean, enough said here, like just glory to God for doing all these things for us. And I've been saying this whole time, like like this is a work of God. Um, so glory be to the triune God who worked together in a unified will in order to redeem us. Here's the chorus. Um, so if you remember the the wording for the course I used, who is this that comes in glory? Uh, slightly changing it up. Uh, forever he'll reign in glory. Creation shouts in jubilee. And there's many passages that this references, um, one of which saying that the entire creation groans for the redemption of the world and for the rev the, the, the rev revelation or the manifestation of the sons of God, to be like for them to be revealed. 
Um, all of creation waits on this. And Jesus says that if you don't cry out, the rocks will. So all of creation is groaning for the redemption that is to come and for the 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 sons of God to be revealed. Um, and using the word jubilee again, because it's freedom, right? We are freed from the shackles of this wretched world. Not to say that it's not, not the Gnostic idea that the uh, physical is evil, but I'm just saying we are in a corrupt world, right? Um, but death is swallowed up in victory. This is 1 Corinthians 15. Um, and this is actually like the opening quote for the music video for The Conqueror. And then here is referencing back to Revelation 21.4. Well, not back, but because I forever sleep, the chorus is this. No longer must we suffer. No longer have we sorrow. Jesus conquered sin by death. Our sins atoned. And atoned rise of sorrow. It works. I, trust me. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is where our joy comes from. As a Christian, we look and look forward to the future and understand that um, our suffering will come to an end. Our sorrow will come to an end. Every tear will be wiped from our, our from our eyes. There will be no more sorrow, no more pain, no more crying because the former things have passed away. We have a new heaven and a new earth that's on our horizon and all we have to do is wait for it patiently and it will come because it will because God keeps his promises. And originally, like until like one week before the release, this wasn't in the song, but before the solo, I felt a little empty. So Tony's like, hey, just record like two lines. Okay, as it is written, your sins may be forgiven. Very simple. Um, Straight to the point, the opportunity for forgiveness of sins is there as it is written. And then this portion here is the trademark reformed uh, spoken word section of most of our songs. Um, it's just something I like to do, I guess. I don't know. Um, the future is already written, which is to say that before the foundation of the world, God had planned this all out from eternity past. He knew what he intended to do in the future to send Christ to redeem the people, or redeem a people for himself, that he would defeat death uh, and have his glory be shown through the defeat of evil, right? So if the future is already written and you come to understanding that the Bible is true, then it's very logical. Like, okay, well, I know who wins in the end <laughs> and it's not Satan because Satan and every bystander will be thrown into the lake of fire for eternity. So then... Why are you siding against the victorious God? Very logical question. Um, and I purposely said bystander here because if you look at uh, Revelation 20.10, it says all those who take the mark will be thrown into the lake of fire. But essentially all those outside of Christ will be taking that mark. And even if you believe yourself to be a neutral party, uh, I emphasize that you're also included here because, I mean, you're not you're you're not in Christ. You're outside of Christ. That's very clear in First John, like John's first epistle. So then, the word bystander is supposed to hopefully catch your attention. So it's not saying like Satan and every Satan worshiper. I was like, well, I'm I'm not a Satan worshiper, so I'll be okay, right? No, every bystander, even if you're on the outside, just neutral party, because there's no neutral party. If Christianity is true, and I'm appealing to logic here, there's only one way to redemption. There's only one hope for your wretched soul. There is salvation in no other name apart from Jesus Christ. That's Acts 4.12. So yeah, I, I reading this back again, I didn't realize how much of an appeal to logic it is, but it's, it's, it's simply like, look, premise number one, the future is already written. Premise number two, it the future that is written says that Satan and every bystander will be thrown into the lake of fire for eternity. So then, including why are you siding against the God who will win if the future is already written and all this, like, it's logical. So, I mean, the one contention, well, I don't know if Christianity is true. Okay, well, if Christianity is true, there's only one way to redemption and there's only one hope for your wretched soul and there's salvation in no other name apart from Jesus Christ. So it's up to you right now. This is a very fundamental and existential question. Is Christianity true? I made the case in many of my Bible studies that it has to be. Um, there's plenty of resources to understand that Christianity is true. F sorry, fulfilled prophecy, the historicity of the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ, um, the uh, testimony of the apostles, the practical truth of scripture that is the only reasonable explanation for all of reality. Um, you can go on and on about proofs about Christianity, but 
essentially. This is a question you have to you have to divulge in. If Christianity is true, what are you gonna do? Right? So then in the end, I kind of make it like a hasty thing because you may die tomorrow and face the holy throne. I'm kind of referencing back to reprobate, but make your choice today, right now. You are not promised tomorrow. Act quickly because you may be damned to hell forever. Very, very, very strong urgency. None of us is promised tomorrow. It doesn't matter how old or young you are. You could die tomorrow. You could die in, while listening to the study. <laughs> so if you need to pause right now and repent and trust in Christ, right? And you will be saved. Um, you're given the information here and it's time to act. Uh, finishing off with smoke of their torment. And the smoke of their torment now ascendeth up forevermore. Forever and ever. And uh, there's one note here. Now and ascendeth. I needed the syllables, okay? So it's not correct to say now ascendeth, but I had to. <laughs> it would be, and the smoke of the torment ascends up. It wouldn't work. So, and the smoke of the torment now ascendeth up forever. It's just, it makes sense. Uh, heed the warnings of our urgent preaching. As simple as possible. Repent and trust in the Savior. For thus saith the Lord. And then it ends off repeating the saith the Lord seven times. Uh, not necessarily, uh, well, it's just eight minus one. It's not really like a artistically intentional thing. It's just seven obviously is a divine number. And then, I mean, if it's four, four and there's a stanza of eight bars, it's obviously going to be seven times because it's seven repetitions. Um, but yeah, that, that concludes the, the lyrics to the song. Um, but essentially, as you can see, it summarizes the fullness of the message of the EP and it actually comes down, comes together as a pretty um, succinct and cohesive gospel presentation. And if we were to just emphasize what is being said here, this is all true stuff that as an atheist, let's say four years ago now, this would have been foolishness to me. But it is true and I preach all these things as, as if I'm preaching to myself or someone like me when I was four, like uh, when, I, when I was four years ago, I'm preaching to myself when I'm saying, listen to these things because this is the truth. And I don't want to see anyone perishing who has heard this truth. This is the power of God and the salvation. This, this gospel message that teaches the truths of the state of you. And the fact that God has a wrath built up, for the evils of humanity. And you're included in that. There's no, not one. You are one of those who um, have kindled up God's wrath because of your sin and your rebellion active against him. Don't go down the path of reprobation. That will lead to damnation. If you continue living in sin, you'll be stricken dead by your vile passions. If not in, in, directly in this life, it will be an eternal reality. Do not create false idols. Do not worship them. Do not point the finger when you should be looking at yourself and seeing your sin. The open call right now is to repent and trust in Christ, to recognize your sins, to realize that you cannot continue further in this, to recognize that you need a Savior, that you're not able to do all this yourself. This is, the reality is that that man is sick and need of a, of a physician, a divine physician. We're suffering from the sickness, which is sin. It's more than just our actions. It's an internal state of disease that is in all of us. And what do we do? If we read Romans 7, which I'll get to. Actually, no, I'll open it now. Romans 7. Here, let's see. Um, I'll start from here. It, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me. To will to do good. But how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not do, that I practice. And then we move forward. Um... But I see another law in my members, warning against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. This is not a healthy person, but this is all of us. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? 
I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The answer is Christ. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. And we learn in Romans 8 as well that, where is it, where is it? Um... Come on. Come on, where is it? Um It was just it was just posted on Discord. I I I could search for it. Let me just find it real quick. Essentially that um oh, it's right here. No, it's not it. What? Oh, I'm on the wrong. Okay, that's why I was looking in Romans eight. <laughs> I mean, it was Romans seven. When I was trying to look for Romans eight, that's why I couldn't find it. Um, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh; but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So then what do we do now? If you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, how can you possibly do this? Because your mind is carnal. But those who are saved here, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit of life is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So then I plead with you now, if you, if you recognize your natural enmity against God and you feel the yearning to please God, you know that it's by, not by your flesh that you can do this. But the Spirit of God is stirring something up in you. The Spirit of God who dwells in you will permit you and guide you to be able to follow Him. That in the Spirit, you will be of Christ and that, that, that Spirit will raise you from the dead. So, if you have that yearning in you, call out to the Lord and ask Him to give you a new heart and a new spirit and repent your sins, repent of your sins and trust in Him. Your life depends on your repentance. The free gift is free. Jesus' righteousness is free. And if you feel that yearning in your spirit, call out to God right now. His ears are open to all those who will call upon him. And I mean, that's, that's the thesis of this entire EP, but we can keep going. Um, with martyr, when you have the Holy Spirit in you, all of the endless riches of joy and, and, and gladness will, will shower in because um, of the truth that is um, revealed in scripture and the hope that we have in the future. The Holy Spirit can move us through any tribulation and any hardship because we know what the future holds for us. The kingdom of God is ours. The great, the great reward in heaven is ours. And if you are in Christ, blessed are you because you've inherited eternal life. Um, and we can boldly declare the kingdom has come and that we are freed from the wretchedness of this world. And we see in the conqueror, what glory that there is waiting for us in heaven because Christ opened the floodgates of heaven. He opened the gates of heaven and, and allowed for man to come in with him that in his ascension, we can behold our own through faith. So trust in the Lord for your salvation because he did all the work. It's a finished work by him. He conquered sin and Satan and by his death, our sins atones. So all the sins that may be on your mind right now that you commit, those in Christ are atoned for. So believe in him and trust in him. And that's the message of this song. Repent and trust in the savior. Again, this is urgent. This is an urgent message. But it's a, it's a very easy one to understand. It just takes you to recognize your sin, confess them to the Lord, repent of them, which means to turn away from them and forsake your sins. Side with the victorious God and avoid this destination that was um, 
on your path. Death is swallowed up in victory. You don't have to be swallowed up in death. I don't really know. I mean, <laughs> this is, it, I mean, the entire message of the EP is pretty moving to me. So I hope you can hear the passion that's in my voice that in my very monotone voice, but that, I mean, that, that's the, that's the thesis of this EP and I'm happy with how it all came together. Um, I believe that it's quite uh, feasible to just use the word of God in music and it becomes potent beyond the the music itself. Like metal music, whatever kind of music, it's kind of uh, inconsequential. But the point is that the, the lyrics behind it, if it's just what scripture says, that's the most powerful tool, more powerful than any metal breakdown or any intense high scream or high melody. <laughs> um, this is a call to all those listening. Those who are in Christ already, you can be edified by the reminder of the truth that we have accepted, that we can find joy in the fact that we have this victory destined for us. And for those who have loved ones who have not accepted this, may this be an encouragement to speak to them about this. Share this music. This might be the gateway for them. Um, especially if they're familiar with Bury the Light or Fire Inside. Like this is uh um this is the um amalgamation of everything that I believe God gave me a platform to do, which is to use my platform for his glory and to share the message of life. So if that can be some sort of gateway for someone to come to Christ in your life, feel free to use it. And everything that I have is a open domain, like a public domain. Like you can teach exactly what I just read from the scriptures here. Um, and again, how will they believe without a preacher? So you step up to that plate and you believer can uh, win souls to the kingdom. And for those who are uh, um, contemplating these truths, I mean, just message me if you have any questions, but I just ask that you take some time to reflect and God's ear is open to you. Just, just close the door to your room, close your eyes and speak to him directly. Ask him to lead you into all truth. Because Jesus says... Um, that the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. He promises this, that he will send the comforter who will lead you into all truth. The first thing that I prayed is that, that God would, would reveal me the truth, and he does so. He doesn't lie. So if you truly believe all this in your heart, the Holy Spirit's already stirring something in you. Just just respond. <laughs> just just call back, call to him. He's calling out to you through these words. So just talk to him. He has an open ear to those who have a contrite heart and a broken spirit. And the purpose of the law is to break your spirit a little bit, break down our pride and recognize our need for a savior. I think with that, I can just pray and close off the recording. We can, we can everyone who's live here, we can continue discussing afterwards, but um, I think that's sufficient. It's been, I think 70 minutes or so is pretty good for a, a lyric analysis. Um, but yeah, I'll close off, in, close off in prayer. Father God, thank you so much for allowing me, Jake, and Tony to have come together, having never met in person, to put this album together. And I thank you, Lord, that um, through your guidance that all these passages from your word were, be able, were able to be placed together in a cohesive fashion that the full narrative of the gospel could be um, preached to all those who need to hear it. And I pray, Lord, that this does not fall on deaf ears, but this falls on an ear of uh, maybe just one person who needs to hear it and is being stirred up by the Holy Spirit to to faith and repentance. Work in them, Lord, and and and. Um, show them your goodness and your grace that your free gift of salvation is available and 
they need not do anything but um, trust in you and believe in you. That you may empower them to turn from their sins and turn to you. And I thank you, Lord, that um, you've given me my platform and this opportunity and that you've shown your light on me that I, I may see this truth and um, thank you for this yearning that you've given me to to um, preach the gospel and exposit this text. And I know that it's not by my power, but by yours. So I pray, Lord, that you may use this work and 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 help us to reform the ourselves, reform the Christian metal scene, to encourage other bands to be bolder with their lyrics, that we may see some sort of... Uh, change in, in direction into what we are ought to do as Christians and as a body of Christ to be strengthened in your word, to be edified and to be, um, uh, to, to, to be more aware of the truths of Christianity and have these be in our minds so that we can meditate on them day in and day out. And may this reflect in our lives. I think, I just thank you Lord Jesus for, for, for everything here. And we pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. <clears throat> all right. Well, uh, I'll just close off the recording. Thanks for watching. And stay tuned for the album. Hopefully that's coming out by the end of this year with a lot of songs on it. All right. Peace. Peace.